All right, unit one of psychology, we're going to be looking at founding fathers of psychology, for lack of a better title, um, is what I call it. And we're looking at some significant figures in the early years of psychology, which really um, dates from like the late 19th century into the early 20th century and into the, even the mid 20th century. And we're going to start with um, the guy on the far left here, Wilhelm Wundt. And with a name like Wilhelm Wundt, you are definitely German. So let's look at him. You should have a chart to keep track of your notes here. So we're going to do just a short little lesson and then there'll be practice for it. All right, here we go. Wilhelm Wundt, let's talk about this. All right, uh, well, one, uh, you won't be tested on this, but just to give you a context of one, the time period we're talking, his birth was in 1832. He dies in 1920. So obviously, like his main time when, when this guy's active is going to be um, the late 19th century. By the way, he was the 17th child of Lutheran parents. So, I mean, wow, 17th child um the, the late 19th century was a time of rapid population growth um nationality german we already hit that so uh the modern psychology really gets going in germany and he is considered the founding uh, the founder i should say the founder or father of experimental psychology and and, and really focus on that word experimental because he wants to create um, psychology in such a way that you can do experiments and prove it like you can any science. In reality, that's going to be a little harder than, than, uh, than he thinks, but that's his, his goal. By the way, a couple pictures down below, you can see Mannheim, Germany, which is where he lived. And the University of Heidelberg is uh, the university in the background there uh, in the middle of the picture above the uh, bridge. That was where he taught at. All right, so let's look at like specifics, like what is it that Wilhelm von kind of looked at and became famous for? Well, first off, he becomes the first person, and hence why he's a founder of psychology, to separate psychology from two other branches of science, um, biology and philosophy. Oh, philosophy is not really a science per se. It's more of like the the uh, history of ideas and, and, and thinking about um, ideas and history kind of combined. And so he's the first person to separate psychology from them because prior to this, psychology was seen as like maybe some sort of subset of biology because it has to do with behavior or philosophy because of like how explaining how humans act and, and why we do things. So those are kind of two different aspects of biology and psych philosophy. So people didn't see psychology as really separate from them, but he establishes it as a separate science. That's kind of like his big calling card. And then therefore more people after him be become what we call now psychologists. Um, in fact, uh, Immanuel Kant, uh, the philosopher um, of the 18th century said, psychology can never become an experimental doctrine. And, and when he says experimental doctrine, he means like a science because the manifold of inner observation cannot be held separate and rec recombined at will. The manifold of inner observation, meaning like what's going on in our brain, like the things that we're thinking and doing and why we like act the way we act, like that can't be separated and combined at will. Like we can't see it. We can't prove it. So therefore it can never be a science. That's kind of what Immanuel Kant said. Wilhelm Wundt's goal was to prove him wrong. That was really his goal. So um, he becomes the first person to actually call himself a psychologist. First person to call himself a psychologist. He also is the first to establish a psychological laboratory. And you can see a couple of photographs here. Um, that's Wilhelm Wundt with the big beard sitting at the chair. Um, but this is in his laboratory. And you can see like they have different things around the room to do experiments um, or the type of psychological experiments that he thought were important. When we actually get to them in the next lesson, you're probably going to laugh a little bit at some of the experiments he did. Um, let's just say psychologists don't do these things today. But um, anyway, he wanted to establish it as a science. So therefore, you have to have a lab so you can you know, do experiments. And he wanted what we call empirical facts to make psychology scientific, empirical facts. And empirical means that you're, you know, you're collecting data, like you're proving it, like factually. You're not just giving an opinion. You're empirically using data. So by empirical, you might want to put like data-driven facts. It can be proven through science. That's what empirical means. Like it's been proven through experimentation. All right, that's it for the first lesson on Wilhelm von. It's very short, um, but I do have some practice on it, so make sure you do that.